rat snake. It's about six feet long. If you look at it, I'll pass it around. There are scales covering the eyes here. So try to be delicate with it. I really want it to stay in one piece because this is pretty impressive if you're looking at it. And when I had it on the front seat of my car, my husband had told me, hey, I brought your snake skin home from that black rat snake that Tom has in his basement. And I forgot he said that. And the next day when this is all coiled up on the front seat of my car, I screamed. So it does happen to everybody, even if you like snakes. Go ahead and pass that around. But be careful with it. It is inside out, by the way. So you're feeling the inside. Right? Okay. Um, okay, now we had, um, years ago I used to use a different corn snake that was yellow. <laughs> it has the yellow, it has the head. It does have a little head, and it's a narrow head. That's because it's non-poisonous. I wouldn't be holding him if he was poisonous. Um, but uh, it's a narrow head. So if he was a poisonous snake, his head would be more triangular shaped. Also, if he was a poisonous snake, his eyeballs would be elliptical, not round. Our pupils are round, snake's pupils are round if they're non-poisonous. But how many of you would like to get this close to a snake to determine whether it's poisonous or not? <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. Not right now. But you gotta be careful. You don't want to brush the scale off because if it's not time for it to shed, if it goes backwards, you can feel the scales. Because that's some of the way that they um, maneuver across the ground is to use their scales. Gina, look at the. So there's probably snakes out here real close to where you guys are camping, but they don't like us as any more than we like them, so chances are you won't see them. I love snakes. But they will come out in the sun and sun themselves, so. These ones, does anybody know what these are? Gardener snakes. One, they're garter snakes. Yeah, they're both actually garter snakes. The black one is called melanistic. So that is the natural color of them, and they are found up by Lake Erie a lot, the melanistic garter snakes. Yes. They are little. That is a comment. You're right. They're little, and they're very wiggly. They're very wiggly snakes. They're cute as can be. Um, this green one is a garter snake. They both are garter snakes. These are the ones you're going to find in your garden. And they... Yeah, it is. The texture is so different. It is so different. So you screamed when your brother brought the snake. How did he you had end up doing this? He had a boa constrictor. Well, because they're really not as scary as you think they are. But when you're surprised by them, and I have had them in my house. In, I had one one time Sunday morning, and I was a naturalist already at the time. In my hallway, between me and the towels in the bathroom, I called my husband up I, from the top of my desk. He's like, you're the naturalist. Take care of it. And uh, I said, he goes, throw a towel over it and throw it outside. He said, it's between me and the towels. You know, it was a garter snake, for goodness sakes. But when you're wearing your night and you're in your house, and it's a Sunday morning, it's not even 8 o'clock yet. Yeah. Oh. A very, very, very thick-bodied snake. And his favorite thing to do is curl up in a ball. And he's a ball python. Okay, and this container, I'll show you the container he was in. Don't get too close, kids. I don't want you to get your face in his face. He loves this container. This is where I usually find him when I go into the, his aquarium area. He also has about a four foot by two foot, two or three foot by one foot aquarium. So he's got plenty of space to move around. She, um, he gets, can you help me with it? Yeah, thanks. He eats, uh, Mice, usually. When we got this snake from Cleveland Lakefront, they said he ate frozen mice. Well, that didn't work for us, and he went about nine or ten mi months without any food because he wouldn't eat the frozen stuff, and we were told he was supposed to eat frozen. And then I um, told my manager, I can't do this anymore. We've got to give him some food that he's going to eat. Went to the pet store. At that time, they were giving, they were letting you buy mice for food. For, they don't sell mice anymore at the pet store for you to feed to your snakes. So it's very difficult, unless you're raising mice, to um, to feed your snakes because so, they don't want to encourage the pet trade 
with the with the uh, snakes that are exotic species. Wild mice, like our garage. We, yes, exactly, and that's what this guy eats now. Um, yeah, my my park manager catches mice at her house and brings them in for him, and that's what he eats. So she doesn't like somebody to bring her in a mouse that's dead because you don't know if it's disease. But when you catch them. And you know they're pretty active in your garage. They're probably pretty healthy. So this is a ball python. He's another constrictor. So he squeezes his prey. And what they eat in Africa is rats. So you can see he's got a thick body, so he can take the um, size of a rat. Uh, his mouth can disengage and get four times bigger than it is. Now this guy, I believe, has an elliptical eyeball. I can't even see it. I can't tell. So that would indicate, should indicate it, that it is poisonous, but it is not. So there are always exceptions to the rules. Oh, yes. Soft. Yeah, this guy is pretty soft. Watch yourself by his face, honey. You gotta be careful there. About like, that's too soft for like,